is how do you know that you have a persistent self? As in like, we are who we are? Well, or you know, if, you, if you think of it, this is kind of Doug Hofstadter's question. I think I mentioned him when I pointed out the cover of the book, I Am a Strange Loop. Yeah. You know, where that hand is kind of just going off into, a spiral. you know. Um, what do we think of ourselves as a persistent self? But what actually do I think of as my personal identity? Uh, it gets even more interesting when we think about different cultures. Because it turns out that, that, in a sense, what guides me towards the way I think of myself is a cultural program that we instill in our children as they're growing up, so that they think of themselves as selves. But it's relatively unique to Western European cultural points of view. If I go to other places, they don't accept it. They don't have it. They don't have the program running in the parents to be installed in the children. So, for example, and I think we've already talked about this when we're talking about building democracy. You're trying to build a democracy in Iraq, right? State building, uh, Francis Fukuyama. You, know, you can't do it just from top down. You can't say, oh, okay, we've removed the impediment, the tyrannous uh, 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 Saddam Hussein has been removed. Now you're free to be a Democrat. In a mind of a cultural uh, group of people that don't think of themselves as modern individuals because they've never had that program installed. You literally have to go back and install literature. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, the conception of rights grows with the sense that I'm a self and I have rights for myself. When we look around the world, the Chinese people, they don't think of themselves as individuals that have rights. Unless they've been influenced by, say, a modern Western European uh, culture, uh, because for the most part, people grow up thinking of themselves as members of a community. Uh, something that even Chinese, the language, seems to have a, a, a characteristic of, of not having the verb to be, not having uh, uh, the kind of sets of things so that you know when they're observing their world, they're not noticing, ah, that fish is bigger than that fish. They're thinking, oh, the school of fish are moving that way, right? Uh, so they're noticing the world in a different way uh, than the Western European languages seem to do. But part of that is also our sense of objects and the relationships that objects have one to another seems to be relatively peculiar to Western European languages and our sense that we are unique individuals has grown over a very complex history. Um, one of the uh, books that's absolutely exceptional in describing this is Sources of the Self, <coughs> The Making of Modern Identity by Charles Taylor. A little book of around 800 pages. Wow. That's amazing. It's still $8.10 for a used paperback. That's kind of amazing. It's been out for a long time. That must mean that people still want it demonstrates just how rich and precious the resources are, a modern turn to subjectivity with its attendant rejection of an objective order of reason, and so on and so forth. Um, in other words, what we're, we're seeing is this, this end result of a long history of gradual program changes. So we start off with DOS point one, now we've got Windows 8, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and each incremental change adds a complex array of interrelationships and so on. And if you're lucky enough to be born into a Western culture, you're inspired to think this way through your educational process, through the literature, through the movies that emphasize individuality, through the protest where we complain about our rights and so on, and, you know, how rights have gradually expanded and so on. Uh, but that's unique and a program that's not part of being a human, but instead goes with a cultural uh, linguistic heritage. 
may I critique the question? Yes. Um, could it be possible to change it to not how do we know of ourselves or then, I mean, not how we know of ourselves, but how do we think of ourselves? Because especially after we've already answered how do we know what we know, right. it seems right. odd to say, ask any, any more questions of how do you know something? Right. right. Well, I guess that might right. be only personal, but. Right. Well, I, I suppose what is interesting here is that David Hume is considered to have essentially put the quash on the idea that I have a persistent self. Mm -hmm. Because from Hume on, I, I realized that it's not just that I can't see myself to know that that's really me. It's that there is no persistent self to see. Uh, and Hume seems to have uh, accomplished that for us. So the answer then becomes, what's the program that's installed in me mm -hmm. that I identify as what it means to be a self, our what person? Yeah, and, and uh, uh, the interesting cultural aspect of, of that for us, I, I, if you guys want to leave, I know it, we're, we're done. I know you're not late for a class because there aren't any more. <laughs> but I lost, I lost an interesting train of thought there. Yeah, but the, yeah, but the, the, the um, yeah, well. I guess I gotta quit because I lost it. But but really, it's it's um, uh, a trained conception of myself so that I have. Basically, you train yourself to know that you're you. Yeah, than and, and, and we we do this intersocially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, so um, so corporations right now are actually persons because they actually qualify because being a human being is not the qualification uh, for being a person. That's what culture is acceptable as being a person. Right. What what what's culturally acceptable as being a person is, well, I think I I might have already shown you this, but um, I I mean to ask your your what your question is too, but it's really my language. Um, yeah. So we are trained on the cultural conception of us as a person, our own. Here's my definition of a person. I don't know if I've shown you this or not. Um, but what defines us is, is what, what was your question? I, I didn't want to. This is our own personal culture, right? Our own personal. Like us as our persistent self. This is if it referring to us as like. You yourself. Culture, religion, like all of that that makes self, right? How you would perceive yourself. Yeah, well, that, that answer is probably going to be unique to every, although my experience is that people give me fairly typical things that come from our culture. We, we, we are enculturated to believe a certain way about ourselves and I'll see that in your responses. They'll, they'll each be, yeah, yeah. But this is, this is my definition that, that uh, it's social uh, and uh, requires my ability to be self-reflective. And the one thing I throw in is, uh, or that it can be expected to become self-reflecting by the other individuals, because I want to open up the possibility that the fetus is a person too, because we can expect it to become self-reflecting. Because uh, uh, in, in this sense of the definition, a lot of people will argue that uh, a fetus is not a person. So you can kill it, no problem. Because what we're worried about is killing persons. We don't want to kill persons. Well, uh, a fetus isn't self-reflecting yet. So strictly speaking, you can have an abortion without any problem, right? And in fact, Peter Singer will point out that if you accept abortion, there's not, no grounds for you to say, well, and I don't like this one year old, so you know, that's my right. I didn't like it, you know, it was ugly. Whatever, right? You know, it's not a person yet because it's not self-reflecting, right? Um, I don't like that kind of possibility, so I, I put this little bit into basically Peter Singer's point of view and, and adapt it. This is kind of a merge of Peter Singer and John Rawls. Uh, my own attempt to John Rawls really talks about citizens. Didn't want to get into the personhood debate, um, but Peter Singer's 
comes full forward arguing uh, uh, for self-reflection. And so whales, uh, great apes. Uh, Peter Singer was the one that started the great ape project uh, to give great apes uh, rights so that they wouldn't be treated you know, the way they are in laboratories and things like that. Well, I gotta quit though. What was the first question again? Uh, uh, yeah, how do you how do you define? Uh, let me let me pull it up. How do you know you have a consistent self? Right. I I have it already posted. On your blog. On my blog. So, intro to philosophy. How do you know you have a persistent self? Is this the answer? How do I know I'm just constantly? How, how do, do I know I'm just I'm constantly? Right. And and it, it, it's because your body's changing, your cells are changing. The right. complex system that we think of as your your bodily states is constantly changing. Your mind is actually changing too, so it's not the mind remaining the same, because what you're thinking right now is not what you were thinking before, and so there's this incremental uh, uh, energy uh, difference that's not the same. Uh, so there's not a persistent mental self, uh, right? Uh, so, so, so if you think of all of this, you know, you know, okay, so what is it that's me? It turns out to be the social uh, uh, self. You know, the idea that I, I can't, you know, start suddenly changing myself to someone else. Because the society will in, impose the restriction. No, you're still Bill Jamison, etc. Right. Uh, it's like. Uh, so can we get you this blog page from your website? Yes. 